Hi, I'm Dr. Rob Silverman, Amazon best-selling author of Inside Out Health and host of Proven Health Alternatives. We've got a great guest today, Dr. Jack Wolfson, the cardiopaleologist. He's going to share some critical takeaways for overall health. Hey everybody, Dr. Rob here again, Proven Health Alternatives. I have Dr. Jack Wolfson, the functional medicine extraordinaire cardiologist. I'm standing right here with his book, which I read, The Paleo, Paleo Cardiologist. And he's going to tell you if you're interested where to go. And we're going to talk a lot about that. Dr. Wilson, how you doing? I'm doing excellent, Dr. Robert Silverman. Always a pleasure to see you, to talk to you. Uh, you're, you know, you're truly one of my one of my heroes and well-respected people, honestly, in the functional medicine space. You know, you, you know, people people like you, doctors like you, have more knowledge and wisdom about health and wellness in your in your fingertip than than the vast majority of the doctors, the MDs, and the DOs that I ever worked with combined. So kudos to you, and I appreciate being on your show. Thanks for coming, and keep it coming, baby. We, the chiropractors, we love you. We love you. So you know what? Let's start it out. What's new in your life? What are you doing? What, what's on your mind? Uh, you know, basically, you know, just continuing to get the truth out there. There's a lot of crazy things, you know, that are happening, whether it's from the holistic cardiology side or natural immunity and how we take care of our children, what's going on with our environment. We're really, really, you know, in, in a lot of ways, I think we're at that tipping point of, of our side is going to win. Health and wellness is going to win the day. The environment's going to win the day. Yet, if you look at Rachel Carson, you know, in the early 1960s, you know, in Silent Spring, and people even before her, Rudolf Steiner and all these people, you know, Thoreau, uh, you know, uh, you know, Walden, and and these people that dreamed of this environmental utopia, uh, you know, we've been doing it for so long, and yet people like you and I kind of come along and saying, listen, you know what, modern medicine is going to crash. Holistic is the way to go. The world's going to find out. And, and I think we're there, but I'm also fearful that they thought they were there 50, 100 years ago as well. Yeah, and undoubtedly. Interestingly enough, uh, I, I just Googled uh, functional medicine and uh, pseudo, pseudoscience quackery, kind of speaking to what you said. So a lot of people want to know, um, since you are a cardiologist, just let me know. What's a good way to avoid um, a heart attack? What kind of diet should I eat? I'm hungry. What should I eat? Well, you know, those are all great, uh, great questions. Forgive me for being a shill for, for, you know, for, for doctors of chiropractic, but the most important thing when it comes to health and wellness is find someone in your wheelhouse that is a holistic doctor, holistic uh, uh, chiropractor, DO, MD, naturopath, whatever they may be. Get a good guide on your side because, listen, you've got your areas of expertise, uh, whether it's in, you know, in IT or in the stock market or as a, even as a plumber. Just go ahead and find someone who can help guide you to health and wellness. I think that's the most important thing. And then, like you asked, you know, Dr. Rob, I think you know the answer to this, too. What, what is the best, you know, what's the most important thing for us? And, and I'll pose it back to you. Is diet more important? Is sleep more important? Is stress modification? Is physical activity is sunshine more important? What's, what, what, you know, what, what's the most important thing in this whole equation? Well, you just said it. It's all about lifestyle. And it's all about making incremental changes with our patient base to make them healthy. Had a patient today, uh, and she's a woman of means. And she basically said she's the only one out of a group of friends that's going to stick with what I want because she's the only one that values health. Yeah. She said it. So she said, it doesn't matter if you're rich or poor. The most, the most valuable asset you can have is health individually and, of course, family. So I'm going to ask you, so, we have this, you know, so many people are having this discussion, this argument. Is fat your friend or your foe? No, fat's definitely your friend. But I think really it's, it's uh, I mean, to me, when it comes to nutrition, we follow paleo. Paleo is not a fad. Everything else is a fad. Did the caveman know that paleo was a fad? So I've done a lot of research, on, obviously, on this, and uh, but but it's really just common sense. It's just our ancestors ran around eating free-range grass-fed meats, wild seafood, nut seeds, eggs, avocados, and coconuts. Uh, tons of organic vegetables, you know, seasonal fruit, and that's and that's and that's the best way to do it. I mean, if you can come up with any kind of book you want. You can come up with a you know chocolate chip cookie diet, and you can come up with the grapefruit diet, and all these other diets that are out there. They're all fad. Paleo is the way to go. It literally means old Stone Age. And you know, a book I came across by uh, by a gastroenterologist by the name of Walter Vogelin. He wrote a book called The Stone Age Diet, 1975, and he was a GI doc, so he's really in tune. And what he thought was, what he thought that that the best diet was two thirds 
animal and seafood. Uh, mm -hmm. So, but when it comes to fat, I think we could probably debate about the value of different oils, but listen, avocado is all fat. Nuts, seeds are all fat. Everybody knows those three foods are fantastic. So, you know, go ahead and eat them. So paleo, all right, there's a lot of keto people out there. Can we differentiate keto versus paleo? Well, I think that, I think that paleo, you know, is, is kind of like this umbrella term. And if you go low carb paleo, then you're talking about keto. If you go into higher carb paleo, where you're doing a lot more sweet potatoes, maybe you're uh, venturing into some of the other higher starchy vegetables, maybe more on the fruit side, uh, if you will, then you're going kind of high, high carb paleo. And I think that there is room for seasonal variation. So in the summertime, getting into, into the harvest time, you're probably going in a little more into the higher carb paleo. Wintertime, you're in the lower carb paleo. Um, I, I definitely think, and I talk about this in my book, as you know, uh, uh, Rob, is that uh, whatever diet you follow, please make it organic. Please make it organic. No matter what, if you're a vegan, if you're a pescatarian, lacto-ovo, you know, keto, paleo, just make sure that it's, it is clean food. If you're listening to us right now and you're like, wow, I can go for some ice cream, go get some Strauss's free range grass fed ice cream. Uh, if you do dairy, make it raw. I think, uh, you know, maybe the question is with, with all the keto people, and I think maybe cyclical keto is okay, but all these, as you know, you know, Dr. Rob, that, uh, you know, adding in all these different fats, uh, uh, you know, liquid forms of fats, extra, extra fat. I'm not sure that that really has, has long-term meaningful benefits, maybe for a short-term cleanse, but uh, I'm not sure anything more than that. So paleo one and all the other ones that are derivatives are fine, but paleo is the king of the kingdom, if you will. I mean, listen, I mean, you know this, obviously you're a smart dude. I mean, you know, what if somebody invented the helium diet, you know, and you're like, hey, you know what? I'm Dr. Robert Silverman, and I'm telling you, I've done the research, and helium is actually better than breathing air and oxygen. Do it today. I mean, what would we say to that person? You'd laugh in their face. You know, our ancestors have been eating a certain way for millions of years. Um, I interviewed a really interesting guy by the name of uh, uh, Bill Schindler, and he's a PhD at um, uh, Washington College in Maryland, and he's a PhD anthropologist and a PhD in paleontology. And just talking to him about his research and how uh, up until 3 million years ago, the precursors to what humans are, they were plant eaters, but they ate a lot of insects. And then once they started to become scavengers, so when a lion killed an animal, the lion ate all the good stuff. And then our precursors, uh, you know, prehistoric humans, found that carcass, ate what the leftovers were, but then once we developed enough brain power to make tools and therefore uh, hunt and, and, and even drive off those lions from the good kill, now we got access to the organ meats and that's when our brains exploded. Fat-free brain, what a concept, right? I just wanna know who woke up one day and said he carbohydrates for the brain. Isn't that one of the biggest reasons that we're getting deleterious effects to overall brain health? I think, you know, listen, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's the, all the manufacturers on the inside of the grocery store, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's Kellogg, uh, it's, it's Nabisco, it's Quaker Oats, you know, a good friend of mine from growing up, his father retired from Quaker Oats at the age of 47. Mm. He never had to work another day in his life. You know, he wasn't the CEO, he was just like a middle management guy, but it was just, the, you know, the rhetoric and the talk and, and the sales pitch of all that was just, uh, you know, it's insane. And, and as you know, all those, all those carbs, those quickie carbs are a drug. They just satisfy, they release dopamine in our brains, endorphins in our brains, and we just feel like super high. Uh, and uh, it's, it's unfortunate, and especially when we give it to the kids. That, that's what's really catastrophic. Without question, sugar is a toxin, works with the reward center of the brain. We've seen all the studies about when mice were offered sugar, they took it over cocaine and everything. So let me switch a little gears. We all talked about lifestyle. I'm going to come to you as a patient and I want to get checked out. And I know your specialty is cardiology. What tests do you think I should take and what are you looking for and what are you going to recommend to the listeners? Well, as you know, I, mean, I came from the world of, of the 1970s testing. And frankly, you know, most cardiologists these days, they just see, you know what, you're a late 40s, you know, uh, year old guy and uh, life is better on Lipitor, Crestor, Zocor. We don't even need to test your labs. Like, hey, you know, I've never had a cholesterol problem. I don't really care. Listen, I'm a cardiologist. I think Lipitor should be in the drinking water. It should definitely be in your drinking water. So why mm. test? 
Uh, clearly, you and I know much better than that. You and I speak at all these, you know, these uh, high tech functional conferences. And that, the 1970s testing is over. When my father was a young cardiologist checking the basics, like total cholesterol, and then even total LDL and HDLs and triglycerides. Now we can really, really, really do a deep dive. And I think you, the listener, you, the patient, you, the person, deserve it. You deserve to know exactly intracellular vitamins and minerals and heavy metals and all the in-depth markers of inflammation and oxidative stress and to know your vitamin D, not to take vitamin D supplements, but to tell you to get more sunshine, not uh, you know, to check levels of omega-3. Uh, uh, intracellular levels of omega-3 because people with the highest levels of omega-3 have the lowest risk of everything. So therefore, you need to test omega-3, not to supplement with it, but to tell you to eat more seafood. I don't know about you, Rob. You tell me, I think the single healthiest food on the planet is seafood. What do you say? I'm with you. I like to smash fish. We've heard Bretson say it, salmon, mackerel, anchovies, sardines, and herring. Love the fish without question. Um, I agree with you. You know, we we talk about supplements so much, but everybody thinks all we do is sell supplements and we don't. We sell lifestyle. And like you're saying, we sell diet first. Change the lifestyle. Well, supplements, change life. Yeah. Supplements, obviously they supplement the lifestyle. They're there to supplement it. They're not there to replace it. Uh, but that being said, as you know, cause you test so many people and all your patients as well, the best diet, the best lifestyle, we're still living in a polluted toxic soup and we're not escaping that. So when you test people that say they follow everything, they come up with deficiencies and that's where the supplements come in and replace it. And listen, for those kind of like naysayers, you know, oh, Wolfson's is the supplement salesman and you know, Dr. Silverman's got me on 20 different products. Hey, you don't like it, don't take it. Go see somebody else. They'll be happy to prescribe you Lipitor and then you can, you know, then your loved ones can bring uh, you to me when you're demented. But uh, you know, once again, it's about it's about really dialing in the supplements. Uh, you know, and but you know, once you know, based on the lab testing results, and then it's kind of up to you. It's like you know what, and I know you're the same way. You talk to your patient, say, "Listen, this is the way to do it." If you disagree, hey, I'm sorry. You know, th this is my plan for you. Uh, you know, and it's and it's true. When I see new patients, everybody I tell, I'm going to see you. I'm going to talk to you again in three weeks. I'm going to talk to you again in three months after the second set of blood work is done. And you have to tell me who your chiropractor is at that point, because if you're not under chiropractic care, you're no longer welcome in my practice. I'm just, I'm warning you right now. I'll help you find I'll go, a, a chiropractor. I'll go onto Facebook. I'll ask my, my network of, of DCs uh, to find you a doctor of chiropractic. Uh, and once again, if you're not, if you're not dialed in, because that's part of my success as well. You know, I can't, I can't use my hands, even though I'm a DO, I don't use my hands. Uh, I rely on the experts and you better find one if you're going to stick in my practice. I, and I've seen you reach out on your Facebook. Is there a chiropractor in this city or town or state? And um, I think you have a chiropractor uh, real close to you, pretty famous one. Am I correct? A uh, famous chiropractor close to me. Uh, I've got a lot of famous ones, I guess. Oh, uh, one that walked out uh, oh, 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 right one, behind you uh, a while uh, ago. You, you know what? Maybe, I, right, maybe if you had said infamous, it would have gone over better. Um, <laughs> yes. No. So uh, you're talking, of course, about my beautiful bride. And right. my beautiful bride um, is, is an amazing chiropractor. And I've said from, many, you know, from the stage many times, she's the most passionate DC on the planet. There may be other people that are equal to her. And I know, you know, Rob, you're up there obviously as well. He's passionate. And, and there's many that, are, that share that passion for health and wellness as well and for chiropractic. Uh, but no one surpasses her. She's an absolute warrior. She's always on the stump. And uh, she's a little tiny thing, as you know. She's five foot three, you know, barely over 100 pounds. Uh, but she's got hands like catcher's mitts, uh, I, you know, that can r rock any spine, if you will. And um, uh, I know because her hands have been around my neck a couple of times. So they're, they're I hear you, strong. man. I'm married. I got you. I understand yes. that feeling, you know. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. No doubt. I, I, I stole my wife's mug just to drink a little water. I, I hear you. Right, but, uh, right. To speak to your point, uh, I know you talk so much about chiropractic. You, you know, your wife is a chiropractor, as you just alluded to. So you really live the life. You believe in all that. Um, curious. Um, with uh, this book, and it was, it was a bestseller and all that, we were talking a little bit before. Where's the follow-up? What do you got in mind? You know, I got a lot of ideas uh, in my head, and, and it's just like anything, you know, kind of, uh, you know, uh, you know those, of, those of us that are married, those of us also that have families uh, and friends and all the different things, it's always like that delicate balance 
you know, I put a lot on the internet. I put a lot into, into you know, podcasting, you know, with people like you and, and, and videos and, and, and writing blogs and articles and stuff like that. Uh, so, so the information I think we're getting out there, but you're right to put it all into a book, uh, mm. is, is obviously very important. I do think though, in a lot of ways, you know, just like your book inside out that it was, it was really, uh, it, it was really kind of all encompassing. So it's, you know, nothing's changed from when the book was written, you know, a few years ago to really now I'm, I'm still going to bash the pharmaceuticals at every opportunity and provide evidence thereof. I'm still going to talk about nutrition. I'm going to talk about sunshine and sleep. I mean, these things are universal. So, uh, you know, it, this book would have been valuable a thousand years ago as it will be a thousand years from now. There's no like new innovations in nature that tell you, hey, get, you know, eat more seafood, get rid of the stress, get sunshine, get sleep. Um, if I was to talk about anything more in the book now, it would probably be even more on the sunshine story. And I think also, um, you know, Dr. Rob, is that the, uh, we, we miss so much on the stress piece. And even though I have a whole chapter dedicated called One Nation Under Prozac, and like, hey, these are all the factors that lead to cardiovascular disease from a stress, anxiety, depression standpoint, that um, we all need to either A, get better in how we deal with patients' mental uh, wellness issues, uh, number two, we need to come up with a lot more resources or outsourcing capability to get people in touch with the right people to recover their mental because the mental controls everything. And as a left brain guy like me, a medical guy like me, you know, continues to learn more about it. Uh, I, I, I think it's uh, I think it's really, really important. Yeah, I, agree. I mean, you bring up some good points. We don't like um I have a panel that we do at some of the chiropractic symposiums and uh, sleep, the missing link to functional medicine. And I think sleep is going to be the conversation piece in 2020. I agree. Good quality sleep. Nothing we do helps if they don't get sleep, detoxes the brain, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm with you. So uh, to speak to that, since you brought it up, give me some suggestions on how to get a better night's sleep. Well, listen, our, you know, our ancestors went to sleep with the sun down. And I woke up before the sunrise, saw the sunrise, and they ran around in and out of the sun, and they were naked. Uh, this this circadian uh, uh, lifestyle predates, you know, essentially life on, on, on Earth. If you look back to the earliest bacteria, um, uh, you know, prokaryotes back to, you know, from a billion years ago, they still experienced the circadian rhythm of, of you, know, you know, sunlight and darkness. So essentially they slept as well. And that's how we have evolved to sleep. Sleep deprivation in every study is the worst possible, is the worst possible risk factor. Markedly increases your risk of everything. Probably uh, as, as much as anything uh, you know, it, maybe outside of pollution, I think pollution is that other is that other missing factor, and I think both of those are more important than than nutrition. You go to sleep with the sun down. The average time people go to sleep, as you know, is after midnight, which is crazy. Which means there's as many people, of course, going to sleep at 3 a.m. as there are at 9 p.m. Uh, for children that are awake after dark and they're looking at technology, it is pure brain liquefaction. It is pure child abuse and we have to stop it. So it's not really congruent with society. You know, Rob, I'm sure you experienced this as well with your patients. I, had, I saw a patient who came in, uh, you know, a few weeks ago and he was like, oh, I couldn't sleep, you know, last night. I'm like, oh, what was the matter? He was like, oh, I was watching the news and what happened in Sri Lanka, you know, and I, and I just, I couldn't fall asleep. I was so disturbed. I said, the purpose of the news is to give you fear. And when they sell you the fear, then of course you go into fight or flight. And when you're in fight or flight, you don't rest and digest. You don't do all the things that your body needs to do to recover. You're not, you're not worried about, hey, I got to digest this meal I just ate. You're not worried about your immune system. You're worried about stress being you know, eaten by a tiger. So you're in constant fight or flight. You're in constant sympathetic and you do that and you're done. What are you going to do about Sri Lanka? What are you going to do? Nothing. So Turn off the TV and go to freaking sleep. So maybe you could actually wake up the next morning with enough brain power, physical power to actually do something in that scenario. It's, great. it's a great point. It's a great point about the TV. It's a great point about the blue lights, especially the kids. And from a chiropractic perspective, all this interior stuff, our phones and, and looking down really poses an issue. I, I, I agree with you. Um, I know you're not a big supplement guy, but arbitrarily three lifestyle supplements you may recommend for everybody to take. Oh, and, and, you know, don't, I mean, believe me, I am, I am a supplements fan. Uh, I do. I, I think a multivitamin is absolutely critical for everybody. 
Uh, I'm a big fan of any kind of supplement that helps boost up glutathione uh, for sure. So I do like New Zealand grass-fed whey. I like N-acetylcysteine, uh, you know, you know, extra vitamin C. Certainly trying to get all this stuff from food as much as possible. I think that's all great. And then maybe like this magical supplement you and I have talked about before, which is berberine, B-E-R-B-E-R-I-N-E. And berberine just, uh, I mean, it's, it's like a Swiss army knife supplement. It does everything. It's great for lipids, great for blood sugar, uh, uh, great for, you know, uh, anti-aging, anti anti-cancer, great for gut health, very extremely antibacterial, pro-beneficial, you know, microbial, uh, anti-Alzheimer's, I, 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 so many different things that that particular supplement uh, does. And, it's, and, and that's the you know, difference, as you know, is that the mainstream cardiologists, mainstream medical doctors, they're not reading any of this stuff in the literature. You know, I mean, you, know, you, you knew about leaky gut uh, way before I did. And my wife tells me about leaky gut in 2005. I laughed in her face. I said, where did you hear about leaky gut? I, I went through 10 years of medical training. I never heard mm. about leaky gut once. And she said, well, that's your problem. Go read about it. Well, there wasn't much to read. Um, there was a lot of theory and the theory sounded good. But now over the last 10 years, the literature has exploded on leaky gut, the evidence-based medicine on leaky gut, the testing for leaky gut is available. So I think it's pretty foundational uh, type things. Yeah, it's funny. I, I remember leaky gut in the late 90s in chiropractic school. How, how interesting is that? Yeah, without question. I've heard you talk a lot about leaky gut, leaky heart. You want to expand on that a little bit? Yeah, most certainly. You know, it's, uh, you know, you know, cardiologists know inflammation is bad. They know oxidative stress is bad. They, they got that memo. We, we've understood that for a while. But what we never understood or decided to look any further into is that what caused the inflammation? What causes all that excess oxidative stress? And it's, uh, you know, predominantly it's coming in, I mean, certainly it's coming in through all of our different or orifices, you know, and you've got where it's coming in through the gut, it's coming in through the teeth, as you know, uh, it's coming in through the lungs, it's coming in through the skin, it's coming in through everywhere. But, you know, fundamentally, leaky gut is kind of like the fun buzzword that everybody's talking about now, intestinal uh, permeability, intestinal hyperpermeability, you can measure it, and it's clearly linked to cardiovascular disease. So hence, I, I came up with the idea of, of leaky gut, leaky heart, because uh, really, all these different organs have those have those interfaces between, uh, you know, one part of the body and the other. And the interface in the heart is called the endothelium. And that single layer of cells allows things f from the bloodstream uh, into the inner layers of the blood vessel wall, the intima media and adventitia allows things in there. And if that barrier uh, is not functioning normally because it is leaky, well, then you will have disease. These These... Uh, uh, pro-inflammatory, the things that make up a plaque or a blockage in the heart don't wind up there miraculously. They don't come in through like hyperspace, you know, um, uh, uh, sorry, hyperspace, hyperdrive, whatever, uh, you know, and, uh, and just like wind up there. They're, you know, they're going in there for a reason. And those are the reasons we need to fix. So if you repair the leaky gut, you can do a lot to repair the leaky heart. And I know you're a specialist, obviously, in leaky brain. Uh, and that's once again, blood brain barrier. That's, that's all those, you know, those same areas. And, uh, and, I, and I'll put it to you, how many people do you see mental health issues, brain issues, traumatic brain injury, you know, people. And when you start to repair that gut lining, that blood brain barrier repairs, right? Detect triggers and assess barriers. So what you mentioned really at a 35,000 foot view is blood brain barrier, gut barrier, heart barrier, big problem, all single cells, really thin. Yeah. So, and, and they're not looking at the system approach in, in root cause resolution. We use these all the time. They're looking at the Band-Aid with the bullet wound, the pill and the Band-Aid and the bullet wound. And that's why it's not that we don't like supplements, but we're looking at the whole system for all the supplements, not just one particular supplement. So what do you got cooking? Like, where are you going to be speaking? Where can people follow you? Uh, well, you know, I just came back, um, interestingly enough, from a, from a really cool event by uh, a friend of mine, Dr. Bradley Roush. If you don't know Dr. Brad up in Vermont, he's got the biggest chiropractic practice in Vermont, such as Super Dude. Uh, he had a bunch of people there, including uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Uh, uh, from the Children's Health Defense Fund uh, .org. I suggest you check that out. Uh, and um, uh, Dr. Bradley got people, uh, got somebody who came over from United Kingdom, who is a, a Wim Hof certified instructor. So we all learn plenty of different breathing techniques. And then the thing that has made Wim Hof the most famous is that he's also known as the Iceman. So we actually did some uh, extremely cold water 
uh, plunges uh, at the at the event, and it was it was an experience for this old Chicago guy who couldn't wait to leave the cold water and the cold weather to jump into these kind of tanks. It was very interesting. And the, the whole idea behind it is that it really helps you recapture that parasympathetic tone, helps recapture, you know, your brain. And he really gets into breathing and meditation. And I think it's strategies like this, you know, once again, that even most of the functional medicine guys like us uh, really maybe pay a little lip service to, but we need to do a lot more. So, you know, you had asked about, you know, kind of like the next book. I, I, I feel like in some ways it's almost got to be kind of like this, um, you know, you know, you know, your brain heart connection, uh, you know, me, you know, getting the mental, getting the mental aspect. And I'm not sure I'm good enough at it yet. So, uh, We'll see, but uh, that's what we got cooking. Uh, the other thing I know you'd love, I'm, I'm speaking at an event in uh, July called Freedom Fest, which is 5,000 libertarians in Las Vegas. And uh, for all I can, I can tell, they don't care about any of the natural health and wellness, but they're interested in where the economy goes, where the government goes, and the healthcare crisis. And uh, what I'm there to offer really is a freedom of choice, healthcare freedom of choice for whatever you so choose. If you want to make, uh, you know, a DC your primary doc, you should be able to. If you don't want to take Lipitor, you should be able to. You should have autonomy over your children and their healthcare decisions. Can you imagine, you know, Rob, that there's that there's a, a, a you know, frankly, there's a certain political party that says, hey, if you know, if I'm a woman hands off my body because it's my body my choice but for some reason that same political party a lot of them feel that when it comes to the children they're owned by the government and decisions by the government so it's a very interesting times very interesting times without question so if someone wants to get in touch with you how can they do it give me some of your handles uh, you got it. So uh, come on over to the doctorswolfson.com. Doctors is abbreviated DRS. Uh, uh, over there, actually, we got this special going on right now for Father's Day with my mission to save a, a million fathers. My, it was too late to save my father. I tell the story in my book. Come to my website. All you got to do is pay shipping and handling. You get a free copy of the book. And uh, as of right now, we're on social media, but you never know about tomorrow. So come on over to the website. Hopefully WordPress and uh, the World Wide Web will keep uh, uh, freedom fighters like you and I alive. And uh, you know we've been kicked off Pinterest. We've been kicked off Vimeo. And, uh, you know, who's next? Who's next? Uh, there, there, there's, there's some powerful people that are against our message, but we can only hope that, that the truth uh, wins the day. It's been my pleasure, Dr. Wilson. Hope to see you soon. Appreciate Take it. Take care and enjoy. Right, thank you.